Anthem. Anthem is about a boy who lives in an oppressive uh, community where there is no freedom. The book is mainly about individualism versus collectivism. And this boy who had a job picked by the council um, wanted to be an inventor. And he um, invents electricity and he shows this to the to the council and they bas they don't they don't like it and um so he ends up running to the uncharted forest um meets his um the meets the golden one who um he loves and um and he um ends up break, break ends up breaking free from the community and um, he, and he is good because he has his own, um, mind of choice. Now we're going to move on to words in this book. In the beginning, they, um, keep on talking about how they say we. They never say I. They don't even know what that word is. So they always say we. They always, they always say, they never say you. They say, like, Everybody, every, like, they always say we, they always say us, um, because if, if they don't say that, then, then it's called a sin, and they don't even know what that eyes, eyes is or anything, and if they don't say that, that is showing that they, um, aren't thinking that they're here for their so-called brothers, um, it isn't even their real brother, by the way. So, I mean, um, in this book, well, uh, the they also um don't have names, and they're not allowed to. And so, at the end of this book, I'm gonna read to you um a couple sentences at the end, and at the end. It, keeps on talking about this word, this word, this powerful word that will always stay alive and will never die. And it says, And here over the portals of my fort I shall cut in this stone the word which is to be my beacon and my banner, the word which shall not die, should we all perish in battle. The word which can never die on this earth, for it is the heart of, of it and the meaning and the truth, the sacred word. Ego. An ego is really um, a, a word saying that you love yourself, that you like yourself, that you that you take pride in yourself. You don't, you're not living for anybody else. You're living for yourself. Um, and, um, that basically defeats the whole thing, living for your brother. Um, being here for your brother. And ego is a word that you get, get awful things done for it if you sin. Because, they call it sinning, and um, saying that you have an ego is awful. And um, ego, basically, they're using ego, which is meaning that there will always be a choice. That you can always have a choice. You can always love yourself. You're you're living for yourself. You're not living for anybody else. So, um. When they say that, then they're saying they're saying that they love their self, the golden one and Prometheus, Prometheus, um, because they tried to show them, but they don't listen. And Prometheus was not even begging them for them to accept his electricity. He was just banging, he was just asking for them to simply let them in, him in, but no. And so I think that, um, 
it is a great way to end this book, saying that you that you're living forever with this book, like that you're living forever with this word, and and it will never die. The fire will never go out, um, because this word is so strong and. An ego is really good to have because if you don't have an ego, then you're just basically living for other people. And that's basically what this whole book is about. So if you live for other people, then living for other people, um, you don't even care about yourself. Which in this book, they're taught that you're not living for yourself. You're living for your brothers. And... Uh, if you, if you have an ego, then you're not living for your brothers, and you shouldn't be. <laughs> symbols. Um, a main symbol in this book is light. Light is representing knowledge, and in this book, in it's... In this book, I don't think it was an accident that Ayn Rand chose light. She could have chose something else for him to invent. But when he brings um, this electricity to the Hunger Scholars, um, he's at, but they won't accept it because they will not accept moving on. They want to stay with in the darkness and not and. And literally in the darkness, like they're, they're all they have is candles. So, um, but then there's the um, figurative um, part of it that is their lives are dark and um, they do not accept moving on um, with other things. They do not accept moving on with a, a new program, a new process. So. Um, light symbolizes knowledge, and light symbolizes, symbolizes freedom and independence and moving on from the darkness and moving on, like not staying how you were and, and wanting to move on. So, um, light in this anthem is, um, a big symbol to this book. And it was no accident that Ayn Rand chose like that. The forest in this book is a main symbol because it represents freedom. The councils don't want people leaving this community. They want to keep their power. So they make up stories about the uncharted forest and say there are beasts in there. And, and they tell the people that that and the people want to be protected they don't want to risk their lives it's just like the famous thomas jefferson quote Tim, timid men prefer the calm of despotism to the tempestuous sea of liberty in in anthem the timid men were the council members and anyone else who didn't question the brotherhood In this quote, Jeff Jefferson compares freedom to a tempestuous sea, but in Anthem, Rand compares freedom to the forest. Because it is a risk for equality to go into the forest, but he's willing to take that risk, to live a life of liberty. I, I thought Anthem was a good book. Um, I loved I loved it because... Um, it's talking so much about how the how you have a choice and how you um, are able to think for yourself and you don't have to follow these rules. Like Prometheus wasn't allowed to love, he wasn't allowed to have an ego or anything like that. But he ran off to the uncharted forest and he was not allowed to. So. And he met his love there, and I just think that that's a really good book because it's kind of, it's kind of like government telling you that, that like limiting this space to you, 
in that same, and you don't even know, know what's out in the other world. But that's the good point of it, because, and they're saying that there's beasts in there, but there's really not. And you go out there and you explore, even if you don't know what's out there, and you have your own choice. So I thought that this was a really good book. This concludes my anthem presentation. I hope you have enjoyed watching.